Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Steve Invernoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We have a very sad report coming out of Israel today. Uh, there have been two uh, people killed in a uh, terrorist attack near Hebron, uh, a Jewish little community there. Uh, a father and a 40 year old father and his 18 year old son. There were four children in the car. Uh, but only the father and the elder son were were um, were killed in the attack. The rest of them are, have been transported to a hospital. A uh, 16-year-old son that was moderately wounded as well and are being treated for shock. Uh, it's a very serious situation uh, to say the very least. Uh, they were actually driving along the highway when uh, a, a, an Arab uh, attack Arab attackers came up with. Uh, alongside the vehicle and sprayed the vehicle with uh, automatic gunfire, uh, killing the father and killing the older son there. Uh, I believe both of them were actually in the front seat of the car there uh, when this took place. Mahmoud Abbas uh, is not condemning the attack at all, and that is something that's very uh, disheartening to say the least, is that uh, he is justifying this attack According to uh, Israel National News there, uh, he actually um, refused to condemn the attack. He says that, uh, that the Palestinian Authority there, that the people are under, uh, uh, under occupation and that they're, they, they live under extreme conditions. And the article here says he would only say that the Palestinian people are living under unacceptable, difficult conditions as a result. Uh, he, uh, of, the, of the continued Israeli occupation and the escalation of the settler attacks against Palestinian property and their holy places which bring them to a state of despair and pressure. And you got to remember when he says holy places, he is referring to not only the Al-Aqsa Mosque, the Dome of the Rock, but he's also referring as he has stated before the Holy Sepulcher. And remember the Vatican uh, one of their own cardinals said there would not be peace in Jerusalem until these holy sites were given full autonomy to the to the church by the Israeli authority. Uh, it is clear that these things are not going to be peacefully resolved. It is only the coming of the Messiah, and of course, preluding the coming of the Messiah will be your two witnesses. Uh, that are coming in the very near future here. Uh, and, and I've said many times, people even ask me, what do I mean when I say that they're already here on the scene? Uh, I believe that it is two men anointed with their spirit. However, I don't believe that these men have been, it's been revealed to them by God that they, that, they, that they are who they are. Because once that revelation is given, it will also come with the anointing uh, that will be for that purpose, for that ministry there that will happen, uh, that will shock the world. It will also cause the world to turn against them as well, just as they're turning against the Jewish people. Uh, we see the entire world comes against Israel. Well, they'll also come against the two witnesses as well, because the Bible says the world hated them and the world rejoices at their death. Uh, so many, many Christian people that write me and they say it's hard to even understand why would the two witnesses be hated so badly? And it's because they will be preaching a pure gospel of Yeshua. It will not be the Sunday church uh, gospel that people are used to. And they'll be taking the people back to the original word of God. And, uh, and this is going to be the reason why they will be hated so badly and so vehemently by uh, the Christian world as well. But at the same token, it will help the Christian communities as well to recognize truly who Yeshua is in the fullness of his word. Because even Jesus himself said that when they ask him the question, the scribes say that Elias must come first. And Jesus said, truly, he shall first come. In the Greek, that's in the future. John is dead. So it's not referring to John. But he said, and he said, he will restore all things. Then he goes back and mentions John. But I say unto you, he's come already, and they did to him what was listed. See, two different comings. And of course, Yeshua applies the coming of Elijah with John only to part of Malachi 4. Doesn't reply to all of Malachi 4. Because why? The second part is the turning of the hearts of the children to their fathers. See, John turned the heart of the fathers to the children. The heart of the fathers, the fathers are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, always been the, the fathers. And of course, their, their desire was to see the coming of the Messiah. In this case here, 
God is going to have the witness, uh, in this case here, Elijah will turn the hearts of the children to their fathers. They will actually cause them to recognize that indeed Yeshua is the Messiah. Very, very serious uh, hour we're living in. It is a time where we need God to intervene. Be praying for us here at Israeli News Live there. We're con contemplating doing something here to, uh, to, to, to get you guys involved as well in a prayer uh, a, a time of prayer. We have. I want to pray about it and see how the Lord leads on it, on uh, having a nonstop prayer go out for Israel, for God to send his two witnesses, for the coming of the Messiah, for the Jewish people to recognize who Mashiach really is. Uh, so be in prayer for us there. If you would like to be a part of something like that, leave us a message in the comments there. Let us know that you do want to be a part of it. Uh, you can email us as well at uh, stephenbenoon at aol.com or go to israelinewslive.org. There's a contact section there that'll get right to me as well. And we'll put you down for that once uh, we see how the Lord leads on what to do about this. Anyway, God bless you. I'm Stephen Benoon. You have been watching Israeli News Live. A very sad update this evening. Uh, Intifada continues. Uh, to, 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 to bombard Israel. Oh, one other thing. Let me just mention this real quick. We did the news broadcast uh, yesterday about Nathan, the young uh, Jewish young man who had the near-death experience there. I wanted to bring out a couple of points here because some people have been uh, critical of this, not really realizing very much about uh, this whole story and I think misunderstand a lot that's going on. You must understand, too, that this young man, Nathan, here, he is Jewish by birth. He is raised in Israel. He knows the customs of Israel and things. So therefore, when he speaks about they were studying Torah, things of this nature here, you have to remember, Moses did write a Torah. And, of course, although we know that Yeshua came, he didn't come to do away with the law, but they were reading a pure form of what the Word of God was before any man got a hold of it to try to make things all scrambled up and everything. Uh, there, you have to also understand too that, like I said, he's looking at the customs, but notice what he does though. He also condemns, uh, or doesn't condemn it, but he says the Messiah is not going to care if you have a beard or if you have a kippah. Uh, but some people criticize the fact that he mentions a tzitzit. What's wrong with the tzitzit? It was a command to the Jews. It's not a command to Gentiles, but it is a command to the Jewish people. And one thing I thought was very interesting is he talks about the different levels of heaven there. Well, that's actually written in the Christian New Testament, all the different levels there. Paul talks about going to the third heaven and mentions other levels of heaven. Okay, so we got to understand and two, we find in the book of Revelation that the Jews that are under, it's the souls that are under the altar crying out, Lord, how long do you avenge our blood? You see, so, and also many places in the Bible, you're gathered with your people. So yes, he's gathered, he sees other Jewish people there, people that he has known that has gone on. And so many people have in the ideology that, you know, well, if they didn't confess Jesus Christ, they should all be in hell. Well, Jesus Christ, our own Lord and Savior, came and he preached repentance. This is what he said, repent. Even the, even the young man that comes to him, the rich young ruler, and says, what may I do to receive eternal life? He says, thou knowest the commandments. He wasn't talking about 613 in Levitical law. He was talking about the Ten Commandments. And he says, I have kept these since my youth. He says, but one thing you lack, go and sell what you have and give to the poor. That was all he lacked? Well, you gotta think about what did Jesus really preach? He preached repentance. And this is what the foundation of it is. God will not despise that pure, repented heart. A broken and contrite spirit as David spoke about. This is what God is looking for for those that are truly repented. And did we also forget the fact that he says that they would be blind until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in? And is it not written in the very Tanakh that we have that God, if a man says, God, what about if we did not know? He says, will he not ponder and the intent, thought and intents of the heart and consider these things? Sure. Your very type lays in the very Joseph's own brethren who should have everyone been killed and lost 
But God spared those boys, even though they did all this evil to Joseph, just like Yeshua, all the evil that was done to him. Even in the story of David, Shimei, the very man that spit on David, should have been killed. His own men wanted him killed when he, when he came back down to the river. He's coming back after his son Absalom had overthrown him. And even Absalom himself, think about Absalom, David's own son, overthrows David. And when, when David gets word that his son was killed, he mourns and weeps unbelievably so. Even to his men, even were angry with him because he said, this is your enemy. But David was a type of Yeshua. That's why David mourned and wept over his own son. Because yes, even Jesus, he wept over Jerusalem. And he said, how often I would have hovered you as a hen her own brood, but you would not. Your house is left to you desolate until you say, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. You see, Yeshua also has wept over Israel for rejecting him. And David also, when he was returning and his own men wanted to have Shimei killed, they wanted his head to come off because he had spit on the king coming out. But what does Shimei do? He's there to repent when David comes back because he didn't recognize it at that time. And David said, no man will be killed today. And he has mercy on Shimei. This is why you see in Zechariah, Shimei is mentioned there. and He's a representative of the tribe of Benjamin, no less. So which side are we on? Even those believers, this is what's interesting. Notice the men that were with David, they are a type of the believers that believe that Yeshua is the Messiah, just as Yeshua or David was typing Yeshua. You see, they wanted these ones that spoke against Jesus and or spoke against David, who was a type of Jesus. They wanted him dead, kill him off with his head when he did it and when they come back. But David said, no man will die. See, he's a true type of the Messiah. But I guess it is true that the Christian community will be as it was with David's men. They don't have the full revelation to understand why Israel did what they did. You have to remember, God blinded them for the sake of the Gentiles that you might have an opportunity. Don't be so quick to judge them. This young man has this incredible vision that he had, sees the redemption of Israel. Even the two men that he sees, they didn't raise up out of the graveyard. He mentions the graveyard because he was trying to explain to the people which mountain he's talking about that cleaves. He said, you know, the one where the cemetery is. But he said, there's two men, that, two, two dead men there. And when those two dead men raise up, then he said, as they raise up the mountain apart one way and the mountain apart the other way, this, this young boy saw the two witnesses. And we don't know the whole story. I've heard that he does know that the Messiah is Yeshua, but they just never played that part of the tape for you. But even if he didn't know, or if he wasn't sure of that, one thing that is clear, he said, it's someone that many people already know. He says, and we will be shocked when we see that it is actually him, that he's the one. You understand? Remember, he's telling it from a perspective that he can only understand. So when he elaborates the things that he sees, he sees it from that perspective. And I so much thank God for what the Lord showed this young man. And I think that we should be happy as well. Also the timeline that he speaks about within months. When I see the things that he talks about, I believe that the Lord was allowing him to see the different segments of the time. Even like the war being two weeks. Sure, I believe that war will only last two weeks. I can see that as well. When you're sending out some serious uh, fighting like uh, the U.S. And, and Russian all can do when they're fighting against each other, that would be a very short war. But it takes time for the U.S. to get all their troops there. And when this video was made, they didn't know that America was planning on sending troops to Syria. They didn't know that the U.S. had already, see, because it hadn't been, to, it hadn't became public yet. But now the U.S. is talking about sending troops in there. Russia will have to do the same. 
So I believe what you're going to see is time is going to, to fall into place and what he saw will fulfill in the segment of time as it develops, just like your two witnesses, they'll come on the scene. They'll be there three and a half years. But I don't believe you'll have any more time because notice, and this is what's interesting, his own vision perfectly lined up with something that I, I spoke to you guys about as well. And that was Yeshua fulfilled that first half of the week when he stopped the sacrifices. I know there's a lot of people that disagree with that. But if you go back even in, in, in the, uh, all through the history of the church, no one ever believed in a seven-year tribulation period the way it's taught today. Not until Hal Lindsey, uh, or, or maybe it was his father, that actually popularized that idea here in modern times. Yeshua fulfilled that first half of that week. And that's actually written in one of the apocryphal documents there that he fulfilled that first half. Your two witnesses will fulfill the second half of that week. And so his vision was definitely right on mark because when those two witnesses rise up, the Mount of Olives splits, a sire reveals himself to the, to the children of Israel. And then once God hides his bride, he brings those in, those that have truly repented. That's including not just Israel, but it'll be including us as well. The Gentile people, that is. You'll be hidden away. Then the wrath of God will fall on this earth. There won't be nothing left. I hope this makes sense. I'm Stephen Benun. Shabbat Shalom for those that are observing Sabbath. Uh, depending on what part of the world you're in, I know in the U.S. it'll be it's coming up fairly soon, and out in the East in Israel for the for the Orthodox community, it's already begun. God bless you, and good evening. I'm Stephen Benun with Israeli News Live. Shalom.